And now it's time for some real education. The Taking of Christ is a painting by the Italian Baroque master Michelangelo Merisi di Caravaggio. The picture captures the moment that Jesus is portrayed and taken in the Garden of Gethsemane. Originally commissioned by the Roman nobleman Ciriaco Mattai in 1602, the painting was considered lost in the late 18th century and its whereabouts remained unknown for about 200 years. In 1990, Caravaggio's lost masterpiece was recognized in the residence of the Society of Jesus in Ireland. It is now housed in the National Gallery of Ireland in Dublin. And this is a really great painting. Katie did, Katie did a good job introducing that. And this painting just disappeared in the 19th century. and Nobody knew where it was. And all of a sudden, it just kind of turned up in a Jesuit uh, priest mission house. It was hanging over the fireplace. It had soot damage from the fireplace. It had been there for a long time. Uh, really a remarkable story. There's a great book out, by the way, from Jonathan Harr, H-A-R-R, -R, about Caravaggio's lost masterpiece that actually traces the developments that finally brought this great painting back to where it belongs. And so... Imagine the shock when these Jesuit priests, living a very modest life in this little, this little house, discovered that they had a multi, multi-million dollar painting hanging over the fireplace. And they did a very Christian thing, actually. They decided that they would keep ownership of the painting but they would lend it perpetually to the Dublin Museum of Art. So to this day, if you're in Ireland, you can see one of the great Baroque masterpieces, Bar uh, Caravaggio's The Taking of the Christ, that for a long time we thought was lost or destroyed. And I want to give a great big Irish shout out, slancha, to uh, Mairead McGuinness. Mairead, over in Ireland, we always like to hear from our overseas friends. Uh, Ireland's, Ireland's a great country. I just got done watching the Dairy Girls, by the way. Did you the know? first couple seasons of Dairy Girls. So I enjoyed that very much. Looking forward to the next one. But Mairead, that's a beautiful name. I think it's Margaret. I think it's a version of Margaret in Ireland. Irish Gaelic. Mairead McGuinness, thank you very much. Let's all have a Guinness to okay. celebrate and go back to the painting. So this is a really an amazing, this is one of those uh, shocking paintings that you see why Caravaggio is so unique. He is the master of light and dark. He doesn't paint background scenes. Everything that, that Caravaggio paints, at least the mature Caravaggio paints, is coming out of the pure darkness. And what a better uh, scene for a painter like Caravaggio. It is the night before Christ is crucified. It is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And in the pitch darkness, you see they have come. Judas has identified Christ with a kiss. You can see Judas kissing Christ on the cheek. And the 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 the, the stance, the physical reality of Christ at this moment is heartrending. He leans gently back, right? He resolvedly turns his face for the kiss. The look of sorrow on that face is shocking. The fact that when you look down at the bottom of the picture, you can see his Christ's two hands linked together in, in almost like a, a Herculean effort to try to stop from resisting what he knows the Lord, his Father, has called him to do. This is the beginning of the suffering of Christ. The person to the immediate left there, the last person on the left-hand side, is probably St. Peter, running away like the coward he was, right? When the soldiers show up, he takes off. And there's something really, really affecting about the dark black armor that the soldiers wear as they come to arrest Christ. And the way that the, the, what, what light there is reflects off those uh, metal shoulder uh, protectors and arm protectors in really shocking ways. And, and the funny thing about this picture, on top of everything else, is you see the, on the right-hand side, you see the one soldier, the, the soldier furthest back, not the one who's taking the Christ, the one behind him who holds a lamp. And actually, it's not the soldier holding the lamp. Where that soldier is, you see the man, the, the very last person on the right-hand side in the kind of greenish, you can see the very greenish part of his top, who's straining to look over to see what's happening. It's his hand who holds the light. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that the light in this picture doesn't seem to be coming from that lamp. To a certain degree, it is. You can see Judas's face Judas's face shadowed because the light's behind him. But there also is a tremendous sort of source of light coming directly from the face of Christ and even up in the, dif dif the differential, the upper left-hand side. So this is very interesting use of light and color and scheme. But notice the person in the upper right-hand corner who's holding that lamp. That is one of Caravaggio's many self-portraits. So the painter who would you, he, he, he was remarkable. He didn't draw anything. He's one of the only painters who never draw, drew or cartooned anything. He just took a canvas and started painting. He would oftentimes get his models and pose them. And then in a very dark room, he'd hang a lamp 
from the ceiling and he'd watch how the light shaded. You can see that here. Here is the man who hung lights to be able to get this stark black and white contrast, light and dark contrast. Now he's holding his own light. And what I love about that, he has introduced himself into the party that is destroying Christ. He is acknowledging his own guilt as a human being to be there, interested in the light, interested in shining a light on this very intimate moment, the beginning of Christ's suffering. Great painting, and thanks again, Mairead. Thank you.